Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel, where I'm always breaking down the hot sports topics of the day. My name is Mike. I'm continuing my seven-round NFL mock draft with the top of round four, picks one through ten in the fourth round. Uh, rounds one through three are already completely up and live here on my YouTube channel, so be sure to check those out, and be sure to subscribe to my channel here, guys, to get all of my sports talk videos, including my seven-round mock draft, uploaded directly to your feed here on YouTube. Pick number one in the fourth round belongs to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Jaguars, with some recent cuts they've made here in the offseason, have a need at the cornerback position. I think a nice guy falls to them here, first pick in the fourth round, and Bill D. Bray Wilson uh, from the University of Connecticut. You know, Connecticut's a team that's probably going to have upwards of maybe three guys from their defense go here in the top four rounds. Uh, they're a little off the radar team, but had some talent on their defense this year. And Wilson is a bigger corner, which Gus Bradley is familiar with uh, from his time in Seattle, you know, with Brandon Browner and Richard Sherman. Uh, he's a he's a pretty he's an athletic guy, physical guy. I think fits Gus Bradley's brand of football pretty good. So Wilson t at the top of the fourth round here to the Jaguars. Uh, the Chiefs draft next. You know, I had the Chiefs addressing needs uh, at uh, the offensive tackle spot with Luke Jokel in the first round. Uh, you know, I look for them here to stay on the offensive side of the ball and go uh, with a receiver, Ryan Swope from Texas A&M. You know, a guy that people are beginning to see, maybe he's not going to be just a slot receiver as we originally thought. Uh, he ran uh, a 4 4 at his at the Combine, at his pro day. Uh, he's been very consistent running. He catches everything from what you hear. He's a disciplined route runner, was good. You know, his game tape, you know, matches that athletic ability. So Ryan Swope at the top of the fourth round here to give Alex Smith along with Dwayne Bow a Another weapon to throw to on the outside. Uh, pick number three in this round belongs to the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders' linebacking situation is a complete mess. I haven't had them addressing that position uh, until now. Xavier uh, Gooden from Missouri will be there at this time. He is a he's one of these guys who ran a four four forty. Uh, you know, very athletic guy. Uh, you know, kind of in the mold of what the, the you know the Raiders need uh, if they're going to stay uh, in the three four defense that they currently feature, and uh, you know, and a four three fast linebackers are a must. Z Xavier Gooden uh, from Missouri. Uh, the Eagles, the Eagles, uh, you know, with the cutting of, of Namdi Asamoa, I don't think they bring back Dominique Rogers Cromarty, uh, who is a free agent. So I think they go fourth round. They go a cornerback. Uh, B. W. Webb from William William and Mary is a guy that should be here at this time. He's five ten, but if you watch the tape on him, he plays a lot bigger. He's a physical corner uh, who can cover. Yes, he played at William and Mary, um, but you know, based on the tape I watched of him and you know seeing him perform at the combine, uh, he's going to be one of these gems that they get here um, from you know from a lower level college football. He's going to be a guy who can really help a team, and I like uh, B. W. Webb from William and Mary to the. Eagles here at the top of the fourth round. Uh, the fifth pick in the fourth round uh, belongs uh, to the Vikings. I have another small school guy going here and TJ Wilcox from Georgia Southern. He's a strong safety for those of you who don't know. Uh, I have been hitting on the fact that I think the Vikings need to get strong up the middle on defense, which is why I had them addressing uh, the, some linebacker needs, some needs at defensive tackle as well in this draft so far, and you know, strong, a strong safety to go along with Harrison Smith, who had a great rookie season last year, I think will give them a young core in that defensive secondary, most notably at the safety spot. T.J. Wilcox, again, a small school guy uh, that I think will work well with Harrison Smith in that safe, at that safety spot for the Vikings. So T.J. Wilcox uh, to the Vikings here at, in the fourth round. Uh, the Cardinals... You know, the Cardinals, I have them going running back here, and you might say, well, they don't need a running back. They have Beanie Wells, they have Ryan Williams, and they even have LaRod Stevens howling. Uh, but, you know, with Beanie Wells and Ryan Williams, you know, how long are we going to wait around for them to get healthy and finally show this potential that we all think they have? You have a new coach in there now uh, in Bruce Arians. Uh, Bruce Arians, you know, when he was with Pittsburgh, and even last year he was with Indianapolis, you know, even though he's, he's had good quarterbacks in Pittsburgh and Indianapolis, he's still a guy who likes to try to establish the run. Uh, I think he can do that with Andre Ellington, uh, the running back from Clemson. I think 
Ellington is one of these smaller backs who could be an every down back for you eventually uh, to get another guy in the stable there to at least challenge Beanie Wells uh, and Ryan Williams uh, and try to get some production from that position this year because you know the the he always gets hurt excuse uh, you know runs dry after a while so you know I like Ellington who's a get here in the fourth round uh, for the Cardinals uh, the next pick belongs to the Browns uh, the Browns you know. I, I think they take a quarterback in this draft, which I've already had them taken in the third round, uh, a pass rusher, which I certainly think they need, and I also think they need help at receiver. Uh, you know, they're not. Uh, you know, it's not like they have no receivers, but if they want to be a contending team, I think they need to add some depth to that position. Give Greg Little someone to go opposite Greg Little, who the you know the front office seems to really like. Derek Rogers from Tennessee Tech, formerly of Tennessee, uh, I think is the pick here. I think he can be a diamond in the rough because, like a Tyron Matthew, had he not gotten in trouble, he'd probably be you know a first, second round pick. Uh, given the background, given the fact he played at Tennessee Tech this year, we'll bring him down some. But he still ran a 4-5, 240 at the Combine, is a talented guy. And remember, before the preseason last year in college football, you know, we weren't talking about Corderell Patterson and Justin Hunter. You know, we were talking about Derrick Rogers as being the premier guy at Tennessee. So I know it seems like a long time ago, but I think if he's here in the fourth round, he'd be a good get for a team like the Browns. Uh, the eighth pick in this round uh, belongs to the Buffalo Bills. The Bills now uh, on their defensive line. Uh, I had them, you know, taking Jarvis Jones in the first round. I had them addressing some needs on offense in the next two rounds. I think they go back to the defensive line to Malika Goodman from Clemson, the defensive end. Uh, I think along with you know, uh, you know DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Andre Ellington. You, know, you have Sammy Watkins, who's at Clemson now. Taj Boyd. You have Goodman, who's another one of these guys that sort of got this Clemson program back up to prominence. And I think he'd be a good pick here uh, for the Bills uh, to give them another quality guy on that defensive line here. And when you're playing in the division with the Patriots, you can never have enough uh, quality guys on that defensive line to try to get after Tom Brady. Uh, the Jets have the number nine pick in this round, which is the 103rd pick overall. Uh, the Jets have to address their uh, tight end spot. The, I think they should, they're probably going to let Dustin Keller go, which is a move I agree with. Uh, if they do that, they'll have literally, you know, besides for Jeff Cumberland, who's pedestrian at best, you know, they'll have really no one to play tight end. I think the way the draft, I have the draft breaking is I think a lot of quality tight ends will be available here in the fourth round. Gavin Escobar, from San Diego State, you know, a big 6'6 guy who can be uh, good for Mark Sanchez or whoever the quarterback is from a passing perspective, can hold his own uh, in the run game, blocking certainly. Uh, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, everyone else has him going second, third round. But I think as you go through the draft here, he might have a second or third round grade, but I don't see, you know, a, a fit for a lot of tight ends here in the early rounds, which is why I have Escobar slipping here to the fourth round. Uh, ninth pick overall in the fourth round to the Jets. Uh, the 10th pick overall is the Tennessee Titans. There's going to be some value at running back here in these middle rounds. And you know, Chris Johnson, they, they, they re-upped Chris Johnson. They, they, you know, they, they exercised his bonus, so he'll be back next year. Chris Johnson, one of two things is going to happen with Chris Johnson this year. Uh, he's either going to uh, you know, be a disappointment again and his cap number will be too high next year and they'll cut him. Or I think... You know, which is, which is why, or he's going to come out, uh, play a little bit better than we think, because I think that the Titans need to get some competition behind him to drive him. I think the way you get a good a good year out of Chris Johnson is, you, and it's a shame you have to do this, but draft someone here in this fourth round who has potential. Okay, show him in training camp that it's not just his show, it's not just his team anymore. That he's going to have some competition just like at every other position. I think you get a guy like Christine Michael uh, from Texas A&M. He was very impressive at his pro day. He's a fast back uh, who has the capability to run inside. You're hearing a lot of teams, even the Jets, who are very interested in his services. I think they're just their glaring need a tight end wins out here in the fourth round, which is why they don't take Michael. But I think he slips nice to the Titans, who have him as a compliment to Chris Johnson. They have a guy who can step in for Chris Johnson uh, if he should get cut next offseason, which barring an amazing season from Johnson, I see that as an inevitability. Uh, the Titans can't 
keep on paying you know top tier running back money given their overall talent situation on their roster to a guy that doesn't put up top tier production on a consistent basis so get Christine Michael in there it gives Chris Johnson some competition here and I think he's a good value here in the fourth round as well you're gonna see I mean that's concludes picks one through ten of the fourth round you know, this fourth round is where you're going to get a lot of value. What this draft lacks in top end, top 10 talent, it more than makes up for here in the middle rounds uh, with depth. And I think you're going to see that as I kind of write out the draft. That's what I'm seeing. But that's how I see picks 1 through 10 shaping up. Let me know where you think uh, you see these picks going. Uh, if it was your, you know your favorite teams are here in the top 10, where do you see them going here in this round? Uh, hit me up in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on Twitter at S News Analysis. And guys, again, be sure to subscribe. You get all my videos uploaded directly to your feed. Thanks again for listening and have a great day.